welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video I want to talk to you about national monuments of Ireland, that is. As usual I can't quite remember how it all started, but it did start sometime in January and I started to map national monuments of Ireland onto OpenStreetMap using the key ref colon i e colon n m, which I have documented on the wiki. There you can see that. And I started working off a list that I found on Wikipedia, which is an adapted list that is published by the National Monument Service. The only problem is that the list that is published by the National Monument Service is only the monuments that are under state care. And there are way more monuments that aren't under state care because they're owned by farmers, like ring forts and stuff like that. Or they're owned by the church or the churches, usually the Church of Ireland, because they tend to own the older churches, and sometimes by private groups or even individuals. So these will not turn up on the list, and it is very difficult to map those, but we will talk about that when we get there. So I started off with the lists. You find them on Wikipedia. As I said, you also find them as PDFs on the National Monuments website somewhere. Um, I'm sure you're smart enough to find them. But um, if you look at National Monument Ireland on Wikipedia and you scroll down, it's all explained, the legalities behind it. You see that they have them by uh, province and then by county. And you can see I have clicked on most of them. Well, all of them by now. Um, let's say I started with Kilkenny for obvious reasons. And then you go down here, Kilkenny has quite a few. There are counties that only have about 10 or 12, like County Louth. Um, and then you have this nice little um, thing down here, this template, and it gives you again the order by province and then by county. So the last one I still have to do, the last county I still have to do is County Tipperary. And there are now... 764 that I have mapped so far. The National Monument number is not to be confused with the Sites and Monuments Records number, um, which on OpenStreetMap I have given the uh, RIF ref, i.e. SMR, because um, imagine you have a an early monastic site somewhere, they are quite common, and as a monument type, and you might have more than one church on it, tiny, tiny churches, or church ruins usually. And then you might have a cross-inscribed slab there, and an oam stone, and um, um, all these Irish words that I've only come across now. Um, a crochan, I think is the word. Clochan? Clochan? Crochan? So there are basically huts, I think, um, these beehive huts that you know from Skellig Michael, but they were built in other places too, and they're usually in ruins. But every one of these things will have what, what I would call a red dot on the Historic Environment Viewer, which means um, a Sites and Monuments Records number. But the whole site only has one National Monument number, usually. And then it might not even be enclosed in a graveyard, like an early monastic site. It might be um, for example, I just finished Limerick, there is, uh, what's it called, Loch Gore, and you see there are quite a few around there, and there are all types of things. There are um, passage tombs and ring forts and field systems and all kinds of things, and I might have missed some because the list only gives you, the list on the National Monument Service only gives you the townland, or very often there's more than one ring fort in the townland, so it's sometimes a bit tricky to know which one they meant. You can check against the um, historic environment viewer, but in my experience, after 764 of them, not all the red dots will also have the um, national monument number, because that would be too easy. But I have tried to find them and what I've done, so I've mapped all these sites, some of them were already mapped, um, some ring forts and abbeys and stuff like that, um, some weren't. And even if they were, I made sure that the the road leading up to them um, was mapped and even if there's just a footpath, which you can usually see on the imagery, um, is mapped. And if there's parking, which you can usually also see on the satellite imagery, 
that that is mapped because in in the long run we want to have all these sites fairly well mapped with all the amenities around them as I kind of hinted at um, in the last video. So I did that and then because I'm not sitting in front of my computer all day every day mostly but sometimes I get a bit of cabin fever and I have to leave and actually explore the country. So I went as far as Freshford in County Kilkenny um, looking around there, I was there for a different reason. I usually have more than one mission when I, when I go somewhere in case nothing comes of the first mission. I still haven't wasted my day. So I came to Freshford Church, which um, is a 19th century church, which incorporates elements of a 12th century church, which was built on top of an even earlier church site. And it's all associated with St. Lachten. And there was this sign just outside the church and um, I don't know if you can read that but it has the name of the site in Irish and then in English and then a short description or a history of the site in Irish and then in English and then the very bottom in tiny tiny print uh, it says national monument and then you know it is a national monument even though it isn't on the list and then it has a number here which I haven't quite figured out what it means the second number might be some sort of a category, and then it says Bord Falcha Erin, usually. So they were put up by Bord Falcha. So um, I have written to Falcha Ireland to see if they maybe have a list. I haven't heard back from them. I've also written to the National Monument Service to get a complete list of them. That hasn't really gotten me very far, to cut a long story short. They are numbered, though. They have, every national monument has a number, they, several might share one, but they are numbered, so there has to have been a list at some point, because otherwise you can't have a numbered list without a list, if you get me. So, um, then I went around looking for these, and I found quite a few in Kilkenny, so that's where we're going to start. All the listed monuments I've already done in Kilkenny, as I said, so we're going to have to use some of those that have either these signs, or... Um, where did I put that? Here. Um, sometimes you also get these and you've probably all seen them. This is not a great example, it's, it's a bit damaged. But you see um, there are these silver signs and they have this symbol here, usually. Sometimes they also say OPW because they were put up, I think, by the OPW. And again, you have an Irish text and an English text, but it's just a very generic sign. It just says this is a national monument. Let's start again. It just says, this national monument is in the care of the commissioners of public works for the state under the provisions of the National Monuments Acts. The public are requested to aid the commissioners in preserving it. Injury or defacement is severely punishable by law. So there you have it. That's the legalities of it. Uh, that doesn't stop people from vandalizing these sites, of course. I'm sure there are a lot of sites that don't have any of these signs. And then you don't even know. I mean, you should know not to vandalize heritage, obviously. But, um, for example, Roth House, as it turns out, is a national monument, has one of those um, black signs, which I have... I'm, I now take pictures of all of them, and I upload them to Wiki Commons in the category National Monument of Ireland uh, plaques. And the one in Roth House, which is a bit blurry... Um, also denotes it as a national monument, which I was never aware of when I worked there for some reason. Um, so on the official list for Kilkenny, there are three national monuments, which is um, Maudlin Castle in Maudlin Street, Francis's Abbey on the former Smith Brewery site, and John's Priory, which is on John Street. But as I said, I found a couple more. So Roth House is also a national monument, um, but it's owned by Kilkenny Archaeological Society and not looked after by the state. Another one is She's Arms House and Kittler's Inn and the Archer House, which is where the hole in the wall is now, if anyone is familiar with that tiny pub. So I'm very privileged to have worked in three national monuments so far in only six years. I think that's pretty good. So we will add it, let's say, to Kittler's Inn. Because as you can see, that's not done. Kittler's Inn is 
here. So that's what we will do. And we will use this key, um, ref ie and m, and go from there. So this is one which has one of those black signs. I'll show you again, uh, Kittler's in here. So that's the sign. Um, so we know it is a national monument. You see the black looks a little bit different. The text is a little bit different. Um, the number isn't, the, the one at Rothaus doesn't even have the harp. It has some other symbol, which I don't know quite what it is. Um, and then the number is underneath and it has 455 and I think maybe Rothaus also has 455 as the second number. Anyway, get distracted now. Stop that. So, Hitler's in. So I zoom in and of course the buildings are all done so I don't have to do that anymore. And um, I have this mapped in three different building parts so I'll have to find the outline. Here. I could have um, searched for Kittler's Inn and then it would have highlighted it automatically. You see there's a lot of tags on Kittler's Inn because it is a pub and there's a lot of information about that. And there's also a Wikipedia page and a wiki data entry. Um, so we'll add the, the reference as a national monument. So it's just ref ref r e f colon i e in capital letters and then n m and because i don't know the number because it's not on the list and i'm fairly sure the number on the plaque isn't the national monument number i have to use unknown here it's not ideal but at least we know it's a national monument um what i also did then with most of them i started a bit late um so i might not have done it for all the counties is that I looked for the wiki commons category. So let's say this is Kittler's Inn. So this is in a category that is called Kittler's Inn. So that's all the images about Kittler's Inn, which is only three. I don't know how that happens. It's such a popular tourist destination. Um, and two of those pictures are from me. So anyway. So I highlight all of this category colon Kittler's in, copy that and then add a new key Wikimedia Commons. And I've used that in previous videos, but I usually just link to one image. But um, if I use the category, for example, if you use Osmond, it'll show you a whole array of images. I might be able to put that up on the screen in post edit. So that's really all I need to do here. Added ref in M in M and Wikimedia link. And then I used the hashtag national monuments for all of them. Sources survey, I presume. So that is one with the black plaque. Um, another one that I discovered is a national monument is the Freren Gate in Abbey Street. It's the last remaining gate in the town wall. I want to say town wall because when it was built it was just a town, it wasn't a city. So it's the last remaining gate. And as I said, it's in Abbey Street. I might have mentioned it in previous videos as well. So it's just a node in this case, I think. Yep, and it had a site and monument record number, but for some reason it has been incorporated in the town defenses entry. I don't know why they would do that if it is a national monument. Um, but somebody has already come along, um, probably read my either my diary entry or is just following my work in general, um, and he has put in. I know it's a he, a protection order number as well, which you can do. And I have, I have documented that here. If the date of the protection order is known, you can add ref, i.e. and m, p.o. for protection order 
um, with the date on it. It's probably micro micro mapping, but never mind that. So we'll use ref ie in m, and it already comes up because I've used it over 600 times now. And again, we don't know the number, um, but it has a silver, one of the silver ones here, which I just uploaded today. And it has one sign on either side of the gate, I think. Unless they moved it, which they shouldn't have, because you're not supposed to drill holes into national monuments. Um, but that's what it looks like. And it is, you know, it's very similar to the other one I showed you earlier. It's just not as damaged. And then the Wikimedia Commons category should be here as well. Which I only, uh, again, I only created that today. I'll click on it so it's easier to copy and paste. So there are three images there. Um, at least one of them is from done by me. So you see, that's the sign I just showed you. That's the location of that one. On the town side, so to speak. And on the outside of town side, there seems to be another one. Well, there was one in 2020. They did repair works on this gate, though, last year. So maybe they moved the sign. I don't know. Where is it gone now? The category is... Did I not just click on that? Too many windows open. So I'll just copy this here and paste it here. And that's all I will do. With some of them, I have actually added the plaque to OpenStreetMap. It's not possible here because it's only mapped as a node. I did it with Modeling Castle, I'll show you. So Modeling Street is up here. I took, oh, it's another picture I took today. You can see it in this, I think. No, because it's covered over by the writing Modeling Castle, but I could try the data layer. And it's this one here. So this is where the sign actually is. And I added tourism information, information plaque. It would be maybe make sense to have a subcategory for the plaques, but I haven't really thought about that. And then I have a link to the sign. So when, when you use it in Osmond, it might show that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if I click on Modeling Castle itself, you see there's a lot of information. The Sites and Monuments Records number, the National Monument number, so it's 522. A name, um, there should be a couple of alternative names as well. Um, in Wiki Commons, the category is called Is Magdalen Castle. I didn't create that one, I don't know why that is. So this is what I've been doing since mid-January, probably. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, and it's all part of a possible larger project that I don't want to go into at the moment. But what I want to show you is that um, if you go to Tag Info and look for this key for National Monuments of Ireland, you see um, you get the overview. And because almost every site has their own number, you won't get a, a nice diagram here because there's 700 numbers Sometimes you get this, as I said, 12, um, let's look at values. Um, for example, number 43, I think might be in County Kerry. 12 elements, features have the same number because they're all in kind of the same site. I think it's on some island. Um, and then sometimes they have two numbers. I think the National Monument Service changes the number sometimes. I don't know why they do that. Um, you see there are three unknowns. Those are the ones that I've added by finding them. Um, so these are the, the values aren't that interesting. The combinations are more interesting because you can see that, for example, out of the... How many do we have? 711. 647 have a key historic. Um, why would they sometimes not have a key historic? It's because... Sometimes when you have a castle, they're a bit difficult, like a larger castle, like um, 
Desmond Castle in Adair, for example. So you have several buildings in the castle and then you have a wall surrounding it. And it's sometimes difficult to put the number, you either put them on every single building, but sometimes I've drawn just an area of the castle area, including all the walls, and then put it on the area. Or if you have a monastic site, like an early settlement, you don't quite know how far it extended because there's no wall surrounding it anymore. This is like early medieval ecclesiastic sites on um, islands in the west um, where the walls are just gone or the what they call the ecclesiastical enclosure is not as well defined as in other places maybe. So then sometimes I've just drawn the area and put on... Um, tourism equals attraction which isn't enough there has to be some more long story short i don't really know why some aren't mapped as historic um but you see 604 have their wiki data mapped and again sometimes the whole ecclesiastic site has just one wiki data entry not every single church it could be done but it's not really a priority um and then 584 have a name so sometimes it's difficult to say if you look at the list, let's look at Limerick, because that's the freshest memory I have. Uh, name, yeah. So, for example, um, sometimes you get ring forts and they don't really officially have a name. Um, and they can't be named after the townland because there might be five other ring forts, so you can't call it... Um, Kill me hill, me hill. I don't know. Ring fort because there are more than there's more than one. There are actually two more in this townland, if I remember correctly. So it shouldn't really be called Kill me hill ring fort because there are two others in the same townland. They should also be called Kill me hill ring fort, and then a name is kind of obsolete. Sometimes they do have names, um, which you will find on the British War Office map. But a lot of times they don't, so do you attribute a name following the pattern Townland Ringfort, or do you not? So sometimes I didn't do that, um, and that's why there are sometimes no names. Um, 255 have the sites and monuments records number, which I was just too lazy to look them all up, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I might have to go back and do a bit of tidying up. But what's more important is that you can actually see certain types of monuments emerging there. So fortification type, which will be either a ring fort or hill fort or promontory fort. I think the only promontory forts there are, are in County Kerry. Um, or castle type, so that means 46 have their castle type defined, so that means there are castles. And tower type usually means it's a round tower, so most of the round towers are national monuments. What's not on the list, neither has it a plaque, is, for example, Kildare Round Tower, as far as I remember, or the Round Tower in Kilkenny, even though they should definitely be national monuments. I don't know how it's chosen, and maybe they are. I went to St. Canis's Cathedral because it's also not listed, and it also doesn't have a plaque. But it's the second large, second longest cathedral, and it's probably one of the most important ones. I might be biased there in the country, and it doesn't appear to be a national monument. And I went in and I asked them, and they didn't know, and nobody had ever asked them before. They were very, very eager to help me and to find out, but it's just the information is just nowhere to be found. Some are apparently amenities that they're probably the graveyards. And for 16, we have a start date, which is also good information. Opening hours are on some of them. So if you flip through the 10 pages of um, combinations now, so um, there's a lot to go through. And, you know, some, some are only used once. I'm surprised there's only one wayside cross, which is usually a high cross. Um... Maybe I put the number on the whole site and not on every single high cross. That might be how that happened. Because there are quite a few high crosses, national monuments. Then I should probably show you a map so you know where they are. And I will link the link um, below in the video description so you can run it again because it's still a work in progress. And 
here they are. Um, so 764 roughly. So this is the distribution and the only county that is left for me to do is Tipperary. But you do see there are wide gaps in between there where you would expect maybe like a better coverage. Um, obviously they're not evenly distributed, but it's just strange that there's only about 12 or so in County Louth. Okay, bad example. There are shorter lists. Leash has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, it's not an awful lot. I'm sure there's more to see in County Leash. Um, I don't know what it depends on. I don't know what the categories are. Um, there are some houses that um, revolutionaries lived in, like uh, De Valera's cottage is one in County Limerick. Um, Sean McDermott's cottage is one and one other one. Those are the three. And then, of course, kind of Rose House is associated with Thomas McDonough, so maybe, but it probably didn't get the status of a national monument because of Thomas McDonough, but because it's it's the only properly surviving um, early modern merchant house. And, yeah, so, like, ring forts are quite common, castles are quite common, but then again, as I said, Kilkenny Castle isn't on the list. Um, churches, obviously, and crosses and round towers. But also way, way older things like um, Neolithic structures, villages and Bronze Age things and so on. So it is a, is a wider range if you look at the whole country. But some counties seem to have way more of them than other counties. Yeah. What I would ask you to do is... You don't have to go through all the lists that are on Wikipedia because I'm newly finished doing that. It'll probably take me one or two more days to do that. But if you do see a monument that has one of those plaques on them, add the reference. You won't know the number, but at least add the ref and M unknown as described here. Take a picture of the plaque um, so we have proof and upload it to this category that is somewhere here. I can also link that in the video description into this category here. That is what I would kindly ask you to do if you do have the time and um, if you have the Wiki Commons app on your phone, it's fairly easy done. And I hope you found this enlightening in a way, and maybe watch the last video if you haven't watched it already, the one about exploring heritage using Osmond, and I shall then see you again in another video. Stangefool!